probably just moderate the conversation. So uh, trust me, my job is uh, pretty easy. And uh, just before we get into the main uh, issues today, I would like just to, to share a little bit of some housekeeping issues. So as we normally uh, do, we would like to encourage you, all the participants on this particular call today, to really take a moment to write down um, your name and where you are joining the webinar from in the chat box. And uh, as you do that, if you have other people with you, sitting with you, uh, wherever you are, please also make sure that uh, you mention their names uh, in the chat box. This is important for us just to take note of who participated in the webinar and it also helps us to follow up especially when issues emerge uh, from the conversations and of course um, we try as much as possible to make the webinars interactive it's our space really as the countries as government officials as external agents agencies or supporting partners as civil society, as the private sector. So it's our space really to interact with the specific issues. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, in this particular month, we are focusing on a very interesting subject, on a, the subject of financing the water and sanitation um, sector in this weather case. Of course, we are say financing water, sanitation, and hygiene. So a few very welcome. and. Uh, we will definitely commence very shortly. Today we have uh, quite interesting uh, presentation. We will have uh, uh, Dominic uh, setting the pace and giving a framing presentation. We normally call it a framing presentation just to relate with the main topic uh, that we are looking at today. And then uh, we will also have a presentation from uh, one of the countries just to give us some country experiences related to this topic as well. And today we, will have, we are likely to have Tanzania uh, ready to share with us their experiences in relation to this particular topic. And um, after some of these presentations, definitely there will be a lot of room for us to ask questions, to give our comments, to share our perspectives. But more importantly, uh, we also have space uh, within the conversation of the chat box where you can leave your questions or even make your comments as well. At this point in time, I would like to make sure that uh, we probably start on time. So I won't say a lot more than what I have said, apart from just encouraging all of us to drop in the chat box our names, the countries in which we are joining the webinar, and also mention the people that are with you uh, wherever you are seated. And uh, many thanks to see some colleagues joining. Um, I see John Garrett, uh, a former colleague from Motrade. I also see Prakash Raj Rasmo, who has already uh, also dropped the details um, in the chat box. Let's continue making use of the chat box. At this point in time, I would like to give um, the floor to Dominic. He is my brother from the other mother to take us through this very important subject. And I think he, in the process, we'll also be hearing the voice of Sitali. And after that set of presentation, we'll open it up for uh, maybe some questions or comments. So over to you, Dominic. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Nelson. And thanks, uh, Sitali. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is a quite a dense presentation. Um, so I'd like to preface the presentation with a sort of broader thought um, that I had when um, preparing for this, which is why is financing becoming a, a bigger and bigger topic in the sector? Um, my, my reflection is this, that in many countries um, across the world, in the past, we've simply lived with the incremental expansion of water and sanitation systems over years and years. And often that expansion has come with stated policy targets. But I remember even in the 80s, those, those targets were for universal access by 1990. And they, they, they simply faded away. And I think that the change that's happened recently, particularly with the MDG to SDG shift, is that we are seriously trying to consider universal access within a 
year or less than 15 year period now. And in order to do that, we've got to think about financing or using the existing financing that we have as best possible. But we know that that will nowhere near be enough. And so we've got to deal with uh, the leveraging of commercial financing. So it's this very short deadline um, which is pressing, uh, making the, the, the uh, the discussion of financing a, a, a far more pressing issue than it perhaps has been in the past. So then let me launch into the first slide of the presentation, which is simply um, to remind you all that SWA has um, developed or, or agreed upon these five uh, sector building blocks. But these building blocks are pretty big picture things and it's a bit like saying uh, to build a car you need an engine wheels seats a chassis and windows um, but the real question is what's in um, each of these uh, building blocks and so today we'll look at uh, financing in in some more detail going on to the next slide um, the the three key things um, in financing are the medium-term expenditure framework, uh, the transparency of national budgets, and that national budgets really need to uh, capture these three things um, called the three T's, taxes, tariffs, and transfers. And frankly, very, very few budgets around the world, if any, capture these. And I think that one of the things that we have to think about going forward is how we uh, augment national budgets with financing strategies, um, but national budgets being an important um, register or database for at least two of the T's, the taxes and the transfers. And um, the, the reason why national budgets are so important is because it's the chance for legislators to have an overview both of what's required in the sector, but also of all of the uh, potential funding in the sector. And I think in many countries, we're, we're a long way away from having comprehensive national budgets. And even today, I can only think of a few countries where the parliament, parliaments have to actually agree or, or um, uh, agree to loans. Uh, I think Uganda is a, an example of that where um, if Uganda borrows, then there has to be a parliamentary process. But the, the key point I'm trying to make on this slide is that national budgets are the anchor um, for discussions on finance, but we need to augment them with uh, other tools like financing strategies. Um, moving on then, the collaborative behaviours which are very much about how donors and countries work together, um, have these four, uh, these four collaborative behaviors, and financing comes up again. Um, but in this context of working together, I think the key thing is that the, uh, the, the, it requires will both from donors and governments to make all of this financial information much more transparent and to work towards mutual accountability. Um, going on to the detail of the building, uh, the, the collaborative behavior on sustainable water and sanitation sector financing strategies, um, we have had uh, many discussions about these and I think that um, I, the, the key reason why this is such a critical behavior is to uh, get better investment decisions, uh, to plan for the O&M costs, um, to get better data on the three T's, um, and to use um, the combination of donor financing, government budgets, utility uh, balance sheets, and household consumption surveys as the basis for financing strategies. 
and these provide a leadership and uh, accountability role. So at this point, I'm just going to hand over to Sitali to just talk about some of the feedback that SWA has received from country governments. Sitali. Thank you, Dominic. And this will be a very quick um, uh, slide. Um, it, we've generated this slide from the information that we received ahead of the uh, high-level meetings that took place in April. Um, so in preparations for the high-level meetings, we requested countries to prepare um, overviews, um, to prepare very brief documents, which were called Sorry, sorry, ju just to make sure that we are looking at the right slides uh, on the screen. So um, it leads in slide number four, but I'm, I'm not so sure. Uh, I guess you may have to get us to the right slide on that one. Thank you. So uh, for me, here I've got uh, uh, the slide that reads a summary from the 2017 HLM. Uh, are the others still seeing, seeing that? Dominic, which slide are you, are, are you seeing? Uh, yes, that's the one I'm seeing, Sitali. It's, it's fine. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, okay. So thank you. Others are also confirming that they're able to see this slide number seven. Um, so I was saying that this was prepared um, around the time of the HLM uh, when we had requested countries to prepare what are called country overviews. And these were seen as critical um, briefing documents for the finance minister as well as the sector minister so that they could come into the meeting um, well prepared for discussions. Um, uh, and so we received 39 of these. Uh, but what is important is that 37 of the countries that uh, shared their country overviews with us had identified investment needs for the SDGs um, and and uh, these same 37 countries were also able to identify the funding gap um, which ranges from anywhere between 30 percent to 70 percent of what is required um, across these um, country uh, the, the, the information that we received from countries shows that the funding gap is anywhere from 30 percent to 70 percent of what is required um, in addition, when we looked over these uh, country overviews, there are a number of things that were coming across as uh, common uh, across the countries. So first of all, um, a very strong approach for a number of countries to see if they could um, re get more resources from their budgets. Um, uh, and in terms of additional financing, a lot of countries were speaking in terms of um, uh, uh, getting additional financing from their public budgets. Um, there was, was also, um, um, uh, most of the analysis shows that a lot of countries are still looking to development assistance to finance um, uh, investments in the water and sanitation sector. Um, and a number of countries also highlighted as major challenges, uh, I would say uh, three things here. One, that um, the absorption challenges, which could relate to capacities in the sector, and capacity is one of the building blocks. Um, uh, and and also absorb these absorption cut challenges could relate perhaps to uh, challenges with systems, maybe procurement systems or financial systems and failure to adhere to these systems and therefore not being able to utilize the, the funds. Um, the, the second challenge is, is generally, I think, what we see um, across even development assistance and even um, uh, funding from national budgets, that one, commitments are higher than disbursements and um, disbursements are higher than expenditures. So there's this um, uh, going towards the bottom in terms of the actual funds that are committed uh, being much more than what is dispersed and dispersed disbursements being much more than what is ex um, um, spent in the sector. And perhaps this also reflects the absorption challenge that I alluded to earlier. The third um, challenge was also viewed particularly on the part of the country overview which was focusing on how to attract additional financing, um, that uh, a number of countries said that the sector is viewed as a high risk, particularly if they had to go for commercial private financing, that the sector was seen as a high risk um, area for financing. Um, a number of countries uh, uh, 
mentioned the fact that they wanted to do more analysis to strengthen um, how they were going to close the funding gap um, and that this could happen through innovative financing or through attracting additional financing. Uh, but information in this in this particular area was really um, uh, uh, scanty or, or weak, so to say. So I would leave it at this point in terms of what we saw generally coming out of the country overviews. And I think that this conversation is important to keep taking forward and also to keep engaging with ministers of finance. Uh, and at this point, I think I'll hand back to Dominic to take us forward on the remaining slides. Okay, thanks very much, Sitali. Um, so here we, we get into more detail. And uh, again, I'd like to preface it with a sort of broad observation, um, particularly about the difference uh, between the water sector, or at least water supply and sanitation services, and education and health. Um, and that is that that in education and uh, particularly education, but also also in health, it's often envisaged or or seen as a, an explicit policy objective that government maintains a role and and has to pay for the recurrent costs of services. Um, in the water sector, the mental model has always been at least in most countries, that uh, government will catalyze um, the sector by building assets which would then be run on a sustainable basis. So that for, for a long time has been the, the, the mental model. So I'm just making this distinction because um, that I think helps us understand, going back to my initial comment when I open this presentation, that we're moving from a place where we want to incrementally catalyze the sector to where we want to go through a fairly big bang catalytic process to reach the SDGs. Now, to do that, um, I've already talked about um, on this slide uh, the tariffs, which are user payments, the taxes, which is the public money, and the transfers, which is uh, donor or official development assistance. Now, the other two things I want to introduce here are concessional finance and commercial finance. So um, even within the World Bank, we have both um, concessional and um, commercial finance. But what I'm really referring to here is um, concessional finance being below prevailing interest rates and commercial finance being at prevailing um, rates of, of, of interest. And what these two uh, blocks, concessional and commercial financing, are needed to do in this SDG environment is plug the often very large financing gap that you see um, notionally in this slide. So moving on to the next slide, um, here's something about the Sorry, that's one too many. I'll just go back one. Well, we've jumped a few slides here. Yeah, this, that's the one. Thank you. Um, the, 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 fi the figures are, are, are astonishing, really. Um, not because the water sector needs are, are so great. I think we all appreciate that. Um, and they're estimated very roughly at $114 billion a year, um, for, and that's for, for developing countries. Um, the more astonishing thing is that concessional financing is around $18 billion a year, but that the pools of commercial financing sitting around are in trillions. Now, um, firstly, just about the concessional financing. Over since 2003, concessional financing has grown from six to 18 billion dollars a year in the sector. So there's been a really big jump in concessional financing already. And the key point about that is it's very unlikely there'll be another big jump in this. So maintaining concessional flows at somewhere around 18 to 20 billion a year is probably all that can be handled. 
The other point, though, um, is that in this environment, all of this commercial fund financing on the right-hand side is looking for yield. Um, and there's a term that's often used in the finance world, hunting for yield, which refers to in this very low interest rate environment um, that prevails particularly in uh, Western countries currently, where in interest can be as low as zero or even negative in some cases, all of this uh, trillions of um, bonds, government bonds and other investment money is desperately looking for places to put with steady returns. So places to, to put this money um, for steady returns. Um, so there is, if you like, appetite on the right hand side to come and talk to our needs on the left hand side. Now, um, the other thing that I, I want to uh, talk about is concessional finance um, really isn't the only uh, and shouldn't be um, the only source of finance. Firstly, as, I, as I've explained, there's an upper limit. Hello. H hello? Are you hearing okay? Yes, Dominic, okay. uh, continue. Thank you. Okay, let me continue. So concessional, uh, concessional finance... Um, the amounts are limited, as I've said, probably 20 billion a year is all we can, um, all we're likely to get. But concessional finance comes with some serious problems. Um, it has high transaction costs. Any government that's negotiated a World Bank loan or an African Development Bank loan will know it takes a long time. It's also not necessarily the best type of finance for doing uh, quick things like a non-revenue water reduction program or other short-term investments and concessional finance comes with exchange risk so um, it's often do dollar denominated um, or, or hard currency denominated and so it's it's not ideal for a utility which has revenues in local currency going on to the next slide uh, i just want to remind everybody that it's not just about bonds in the top right-hand corner, but we can also think about commercial financing coming from um, commercial bank loans, but also from vendors um, who might, for example, be prepared to provide uh, pipes up front or solar panels up front, but also um, to think about microfinance um, so we can also talk about not just utilities borrowing, but households borrowing. Um, so the entry point for the commercial finance can be in different places along the uh, chain. On to the next slide. Um, some of the public sector benefits um, of uh, commercial finance are important to bear in mind. Um, bringing or leveraging uh, commercial finance can help reduce public debt burden. Uh, it can improve the credit worthiness of providers, allows for reallocation of taxes to more higher priority subsectors, uh, for example, hygiene or sanitation. Um, and so we need to think about it in terms of the whole sector. And then um, we can also think that once we have working models in place, those working models, so uh, a well-functioning utility, may either uh, yield corporate taxes um, back to the public purse or may pay dividends. From the service pro provider perspective, some of the pros are that um, uh, the additional resources from commercial financing can cover investment and operating financing needs. Um, that having utilities borrow adds an extra layer or of external oversight because banks are very worried or whoever is lending uh, will be very interested in, and be looking carefully into the operations of a utility um, and therefore um, provide, provides this extra layer of uh, oversight. And finally, um, utilities may find it much easier and quicker to get a bank loan 
um, from a commercial, local commercial bank than through concessional financing. Um, so going on to um, the last few slides um, before some case studies, um, and Sitali, I think I'll, I'll, I'll break before the case studies. Um, I'd just like to talk about some, uh, firstly, potential solutions to address the constraints, um, which at the moment we know the water sector just isn't the flavor of, of the decade um, with, any, with, with most commercial finances, co uh, commercial financiers. And so we need to do a lot of work um, in first reforming the sector, um, being incremental and targeting uh, specific service providers, for example, or specific subsectors. Um, so we need to be strategic ourselves about how we um, bring in or blend in the commercial financing. Um, going on to, sorry, I think we've gone, you can jump on two slides. Can we go on to? Uh, Ford? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we can go forward. Yeah, sorry, we've, the slides might have got behind. So another one, go, go ahead to this concessional financing. Yeah, good. Thank you, Sitali. So concessional, concessional financing, um, I mean, the name of the game here is, is blending. If we want to suck in um, commercial financing, we, we need to use our concessional financing um, much better and much, much more cleverly. Uh, but concessional financing, uh, grants and subsidies, um, credit enhancements um, and uh, concessional loans are the three blocks of concessional finance that we can think about. Um, and we need to think about how to use these um, in ways which, because this pool of concessional finance is limited, that really um, catalyze uh, the, the, um, the sector rather than um, pay for the bread and butter infrastructure. So three ways that that could happen is we could use concessional finance much more targeted towards output-based aid. Um, we can uh, try and use concessional finance that is available to help train borrowers and lenders to work together and to provide technical assistance uh, to sensitize banks to market opportunities and assess water investment projects to help them understand how to, how to work better. So the point for this, for that slide is really that we have to use this valuable concessional finance um, much more carefully than we are at the moment. At the moment, we'll, we just use it to um, fix all of the problems in the sector. But if we think of using it in a more catalytic way, uh, that would help a lot. Going on to the next slide, there are three steps that we can use to help service providers transition to commercial finance. Um, the first is uh, helping them plan, budget, and allocate public resources more efficiently. The second is to improve service providers' uh, performance and governance. And the third is to leverage public funds to attract commercial finance. And I think that w as the sector as a whole, the water sector as a whole, we've done a fair bit on one and two, but we really haven't made much headway on three. So that will take financing strategies. And in this financing strategy slide, um, there are these five steps. Um, the first step is very much about um, the, the, the starting point is defining the water strategy and, and beginning to identify in the second step the cost savings from efficiencies. The third one then is to mobilize domestic revenue sources and then mobilize um, the financing from multiple sources and those services uh, finance sustainably going forward um, could lead to the SDGs being achieved. 
So we need to just think in these uh, steps towards uh, creating a financing strategy. Um, Sitali, would it be good to just stop a little bit here and get some feedback, or should I go straight on to a couple of case studies? I think we can pause here for uh, for questions, and then we can um, go to the case studies as you suggest. Uh, we've got also our colleagues from Tanzania who, who who will be standing by to come in after the case studies. Thank you. So Nelson, over to you in terms of moderating the questions. Okay, uh, thank you so much, and uh, I think we can definitely give a big hand to. Uh, Dominic, unfortunately we don't have the facilities to do that, but uh, that's quite uh, an enlightening presentation, quite a lot of things and stuff to really look at and digest on this very important subject of sector financing. And uh, as, as, as Dominic and Stan have said, probably it's a good moment for us just to pause and take some questions. So there are two ways we can do this. One is you can write your question in the chat box and it definitely would be happy to um, uh, uh, respond to that, but we would also be happy to give maybe room to those that would like to just uh, use their mic. So in this case, you can unmute, take the mic, and uh, just uh, give us your question. That's an, uh, the second option that we have. For those who just joined, we are also trying to encourage you to make sure that you just write down your details, your name, the institution where you are, or country where you are joining the webinar today, and even the people that are around you. And uh, that helps. It, it helps us to make sure that we we follow um, the conversations. Afterwards, we can also come back to you with necessary information where required. At this point, I think there is um, a point raised by John Otford, and uh, I don't know if he, John, you would like just to speak to this particular question as well. Sometimes it's 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 better that way. John, over to you. Yes, good. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Just to quickly expand on that, uh, water had somewhat of a profile, or WASH had somewhat of a profile at the Financing for Development meeting in Addis uh, a year or so ago. I, I wonder what, what SWA, I wonder what its, its friends of SWA, including myself, might do to not just raise the profile of WASH at the, the next iterations of the FFD meetings, but to make sure that those uh, that, that that wash advocates within the FFD process focus on all the questions that uh, Dominic and and Sitali uh, and, and Nelson and others have raised here, in encouraging making it possible de-risking opportunities in the water and sanitation sector for various types of uh, of commercial finance. What what can we do to help push forward on these solutions that have been outlined here? Great. I think that's a, a question for all of us, and thanks uh, so much, John, uh, for keeping us on that particular tab. Um, I would like to see if there are other people that would also want to come in here and maybe ask some questions. Uh, feel also free to type in the chat area, in the chat box, if 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 maybe uh, speaking could be quite a challenge for you. But uh, free for you to take the mic now if you have a question to ask or a comment to make. Okay, so it looks like maybe it's pretty clear, and uh, I saw a thumbs up from uh, my other colleague from uh, the Africa Development Bank, uh, Rudolf. This is great. Um, and then there is also a mention just right now that uh, somebody is hoping to email or will email on the PPs. And I think uh, this could be maybe the right moment, uh, Dominic, to take us through the question that has been raised by John, but also uh, probably getting the case studies uh, from the countries. And I think we may have some of the reflections on the presentation that you have, uh, you have given us, but also there could be some solutions to some of the issues that are emerging in this particular area as well. So let's probably uh, get back to Dominic, maybe to take us through some of the case studies, and then we'll also have um, a presentation from Tanzania, um, just to, to uh, share some perspectives in relation to this particular topic. Dominic, over to you. 
Okay, thanks. Um, and I'll answer John's question at, at the end um, and use the case studies to illustrate perhaps some of the ways I think that we can do this de-risking. Um, so if, if we go on to the uh, first of the case study slides, um, which unfortunately I haven't been personally involved with, so I can tell you less about, um, but it's uh, of Albania. And I think the point here is that um, one of the first things that we can start doing in the sector to de-risk is uh, to help sectors do strategic financial planning. It is very unusual when you walk into um, a country as uh, particularly as an international finance institution that you find that there's high quality work being done on strategic financial planning. And so uh, as a first step to understand uh, what service level improvements need to be made, uh, what, if, what efficiency improvements can be made, uh, and um, whether uh, substantial, if affordable, tariff increases are possible. Um, those are all things which have been done in Albania, and uh, that has led to more tailored requests to, to IFI funding. Um, but the Albania example um, is uh, more at the utility level. Going to the Bangladesh um, example, um, which I like very much, and our colleague Rokea um, has been working on this over the last few years. What I like about it is really it's a microfinance um, example and it's sanitation. And uh, the, the vehicle here has been lending to uh, both households and uh, small scale entrepreneurs um, to support their business models. And through doing that, um, there's been a massive increase in the number of um, sales of latrines in Bangladesh per year and uh, a, a big increase there on the bottom of the slide in the uh, loans taken for sanitation um, both by households and by uh, sanitation entrepreneurs. So that's a good example. I know often people think um, commercial financing is only possible with utilities, but here's a, a very live example of how commercial financing channeled through the microfinance sector is helping sanitation in rural areas. Going on to the next slide in Kenya, um, this is a quite a dense slide, um, but I like it very much because what it shows is Kenya has been working on improving its um, or mobilizing commercial financing all the way back from 2002, where at the top of the slide, you see a whole series of uh, legal and regulatory re uh, reforms being made. That then has cascaded down into specific things happening in the financial markets, independent of the water sector. And then um, for some of those things then being brought into the water sector, uh, for example, the shadow credit rating in 2011 of 43 water service providers. But during that period, um, African Development Bank and IDA, EIB and others um, were, were improving the assets in Kenya because the assets were not in a good state in the early 2000s. But that asset improvement program has meant that um, a number of the water service providers in Kenya have, have gone from um, being in a very precarious situation to, in, to situations where they can, um, they have free cash. Then at the same time, there's been work with local banks, um, particularly KREP, which was a microfinance bank in Kenya. And f as a result of literally working with that bank and introducing that bank to the water sector and introducing the water sector to that bank, we've begun to see um, this almost exponential increase. I mean, it's still relatively small, but an exponential increase uh, all the same from about 2012 onwards in the amount of commercial financing um, being uh, committed to the sector. And a key thing here, a key last point, is that this um, last bar of 20 million pipeline, and the key word here is pipeline, because 
when we worked with KRAP, what the bank found most difficult was identifying where the next 10 or 20 projects were. And that's where they really needed um, the, the World Bank um, at the time to help them um, go around the country with technical experts and suggest, okay, in Kiambu County, there's these two schemes that you should take a look at. In, in Wajir, there are these three schemes you should look at. So that idea that the water sector has and water sector professionals have a role in identifying pipeline for commercial financing, I think is a, a key one. So then, in a, in a sense, this last slide is just uh, is a summary, but also very much um, answering John's question, which is how do we de-risk the sector? What can we do? So first, strategic financial planning. We really still need to do a lot more work with countries um, ar around around the world uh, to to just get the numbers on the table. There are so many countries where you go where the national budget might be published or might not be published. Um, it's very rare that donor financing is all in the national budget. It's even rarer for there to be consolidated um, finances of utilities uh, presented, let alone smaller entities, let alone um, an analysis of what households are spending on water. So there's really a lot that we can do on that first step. Um, then, uh, as I said, pipeline, identify specific financing needs and tailor financing approaches. It may be that one or two utilities in the country are ready for financing and maybe um, microfinance for sanitation is ready in one part of the country. And so you need to go on, to, going on to the third point, segment the market into which are the better performing um, providers and, and the ones that we should pick off. And finally, then uh, really support the setting up of financing stru um, uh, structures at national and um, even subnational level to attract blended finance, because this isn't something that happens by magic. Um, it really is an uphill task. And so helping governments set up ways that they can um, it, they can leverage the the public and concessional finance that's available. Is, is, is a key thing. And for example, that's, there are ongoing projects both in Kenya and in Ethiopia right now, um, and r very successful ones done in uh, East Asia and places like Indonesia and the Philippines, which, which have done this. But they've always been done with catalytic public money. Good. Um, thanks very much. And back to you, uh, Nelson. Uh, many thanks again, um, Dominic, and this is uh, quite great. And thanks for sharing with us uh, these uh, specific cases, but also trying uh, to respond to the question that has been raised uh, earlier by John. Um, as you were going through the uh, cases, um, there were some comments that we saw in in the chat box, I think there is a point from Engineer Musori from Zambia. I think he's raising a question um, in the chat box. There is also a request, I think, which has been responded to already uh, from Liberia, from David, uh, who wanted a presentation from um, uh, the case of Bangladesh. Um, I was going to propose that before we get into the other details, let's hear the case of Tanzania at this point in time, and then we will come back to um, the interaction and maybe a session where we can have some comments and questions. So Tanzania, you have the floor, and please pick up the mic at this moment. Thank you, Tanzania. Thank you very much for inviting us. We can hear you. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you hear us? 100%, we can hear you very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think our presentation, presentations are around the financing of water and sanitation SDGs in Tanzania. So should I be following your, your questions or should I go direct to what we have presented? You can uh, go direct. I am uploading the slides, uh, but you can go direct and start. I'm just uploading the slides right now. Thank you very much. I would like to start to comment 
depending on the whether Tanzania have done the costing of the SDGs, especially 6.1 and the 6.2. And uh, this is yes, we have tentatively done it, and also we have realized that the overall investment needs for Tanzania will require $1,252 million annually to achieve the the sustainable development goal number 6.21 and the 6.2. And also, Tanzania aims to achieve, to achieve that uh, investment need by 2013, by, by 2013, because, because we have seen from the country overview document that 100% coverage of best drinking water services will be achieved, of which 66% will be safely managed services. And also 100% of people will have milk sanitation, of which 75% will have safely managed sanitation services. And finally, the hygiene will be practiced by 100% of the population by the same time limit. The other issue which we wanted to respond was about the, how we have uh, of, uh, we have realized our uh, financing gap for SDGs 6.1 and the 6.2. <laughs> uh, the, the, the response is that we, we it has not fully established the the gap has not fully established the financing gap of currently committed funds meaning they approved the funding for WSDP 2, which started 2016 and will end 2021, is the 3,300 3, million, thousand million shillings, million US dollars. Now the gap to reach the SDG is more than USD 9,220 million USD dollars. Um, the, 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 the thing which the, the, our, our country has already prepared as a financing strategy, we haven't not yet established the actual uh, strategy, but it is in the process of revising the SWDP, that is the two documents and the financing strategies. So that's the, the, the situation which we have now in terms of uh, realizing our financing gap. Coming back to the tools and the processes which we use to analyze the financing for SDG 6.1 and the 6.2, uh, is that in Tanzania we have done the costing of SDGs and uh, also the process uh, was through the sector dialogue mechanism, which discussions were held in the six technical working groups. Each subsector having a technical working group, that means Five for water and the one for health, plus also a joint uh, task team for SWA SDGs form, was formed to facilitate the process and the document comprising of five ministries and DPs. Um, and also, the tools which we used, uh, the SWA tool which for costing of SDGs was the one which we used right from the beginning to prepare the higher learning, uh, the higher level meeting, meeting which was held in Washington uh, early this year. But also, once SDG baseline is targets for Tanzania, the final, uh, final draft matrix for baseline figures and also targets for SDGs was developed as part of the higher level meeting uh, participatory process. But also the WSDP phase two program documents, uh, which is, yes. is for 2014-2019 was also used to realize uh, the, 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 the realize the work, for, uh, work as a process. But also we had a report for this which we used. The data which was used for us was the sustainable development group based on the data, the information about the inequalities, which were very, very useful to us. 
but also we realize that at the many game stage, some of the game fee estimates were reduced to either were either too low or too high compared to the recent surveys and also routine. Uh, the partners were involved in the process and this was through the sector dialogue meetings and the sector meetings, stakeholders meetings. You can see that five partners were represented in the SWA SDG task team, which was involved in the process, the preparatory process. Uh, about the, coming back to the uh, strategy to close the funding game, as we have said uh, right from the beginning, Tanzania is implementing an aggressive campaign to increase the domestic revenue collection and enhance value for money in all sectors, including wars and the fighting um, against corruption. Also, the sector is introducing performance-based program funding and implementation strategies to reduce implementation inefficiencies and increase sustainability for investment. But also, the water supply and the sanitation utilities are implemented strategies to minimize the revenue water, which is frequently stand, which has a frequent stand, stand stood at 34%. But also efforts to increase the public, uh, uh, public funding allocation for underfunded subsector, especially sanitation and hygiene, the, uh, the so-called invisible including school and the health facility watch, and also at the health sector strategic plan for the, uh, 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 the education sector development program were also uh, realized. We also established the National Water Investment Fund for Rural Water Supply, which started operating since 2016. We identified also and attract more commercial finance from the best from both domestic and international sources, they started introducing the best uh, distributed operate transfer, the BOT initiative. But finally, we mobilized a wide spectrum of stakeholders, including communities, to contribute for accelerated action towards achieving 100% access to basic sanitation and the same 25% access to self-remaining sanitation by 20 states. If you take an example, at the water sector development of phase one, communities and other uh, stakeholders catch and they kind of contribution to schools and they put the subsector to reach 2,173 2, schools with, with improved sanitation and hygiene services, which surpassed the original target of 812 schools. You can see that we went beyond the 100% of what we intended. Uh, the other issue was about how we engage the Minister of Finance and the other partners into the activity of the implementation of SDGs. We have done some much on this and the, uh, uh, through the engagement of ongoing through the engagement of uh, which, which is ongoing, but this is a deeper and the most systematic uh, uh, way to, to make sure that the Minister of Finance is engaged. In the SDG domestication and the monitoring process, uh, preparatory process, the Minister of uh, Finance has involved, has involved the representative from each sector ministry in the SDG's coordination process. But also, we realized that SWA and the SWA SDG task team involved also a member from the Minister of Finance and the Planning, which, who attends our meetings regularly. Um, the budget negotiation for the, 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 the coming year is adopted with a virtual impact for the, the coming financial year for us, which starts in June to July. And for the budget for 2018-19, we will start in November and December because that is the, the normal step of budget, budgeting and the planning step for us. Uh, but also the discussions for the 
is an expensive framework. We also form the same route because it is in the normal process where we normally conduct the same. Um, so, uh, about the common agreements with me, made with the partners on how they will support the financing of the sector, this is an, an ongoing process. It has already been going for so long. The sector has adopted the sector-wide program or swap funded by the government of Tanzania and the development of partners, development partners, including the CSOs. Areas of learning and other, from other partners, this I can say that we, we would like to, to hear or learn from other partners, including the government, uh, the government, the government bank, uh, including, uh, including the external support agencies, civil societies, public sector, researching and ready. But all our dreams are on the how other countries are managing to capture and brief the ministers. In Tanzania has been a challenge that the three ministers cannot be made, they cannot meet at the same time we want. You might find that two of them are either in Dar es Salaam or Dodoma, one of them is missing. One might be in Kansas, the other one might be outside, so it's a challenge. But also we want to, to know how are how they are how other countries are doing for financing of the SDGs? How are the private sector and the commercial or development financiers engaged, etc.? Because this is an area where we also want to learn more to make sure that SDGs are well financed and the financing gaps are reduced. But the third one is that we want also to, to learn from others how they are going to get better data for safely managing whether water supply or sanitation. It's, a, 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 it's a, a challenge to us on how we can capture the information to get the, the, the business for that. But finally, is that we want also to learn more from others on what are the platforms on which the SDG financing is discussed or determined. We might be going the right of a, a correct way because we don't know exactly which platforms can we use and which are the ones which are more and more uh, successful to make us the financing game, but also the implementation of the SDGs are well done. This is the presentation about Tanzania, and this is what we have, we have done to make sure that the financing on the water and the sanitation for SDGs is implemented in our country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Tanzania. Uh, and I think we could have said, really, let's give Tanzania a big hand for sharing some of the perspectives, some real-life experiences, and uh, the challenges and the situation in relation to sector financing um, for water, sanitation, and hygiene within the context of achieving the SDGs. Now, at this point, um, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, wherever we are, we are approaching an hour mark into the this particular webinar, but we have quite interesting points that have been raised in the chat box, a number of questions that have been raised by Engineer Musori, there are a couple of points also raised by Katarina and John Garrett, Majeda, Roberto Martin, and also David Bikida have, David Bikada, sorry, um, have also raised quite interesting questions. And um, as I said, if, if you still have a question or a point that you want to raise, feel free to drop it in the chat box. But also, um, we would like to maybe relate to some of these questions. So at this point in time, if we don't mind, can I ask maybe Engineer Musori just to articulate a little bit your uh, points or questions, and then we will allow colleagues to respond to this. This is just if, to make sure that we have a little bit more interaction as well. Um, Engineer Musori? Uh, are, are you able to hear me? Yes, please. We can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, my, my, my question is arising from the low tariffs uh, in the sector. And uh, as you are aware, most of the uh, countries 
have uh, regulators. I don't know how the structure is in other countries, but the ones that I've visited so far have uh, a water utility company which is separate from uh, the regulator. So you find that the regulator tries to strike a balance between the commercial utility company and and uh, the consumers. But in what what has happened is uh, you find that there are a lot of companies, for instance, who come to you know, with with a view of uh, getting into a, a public a private partnership, but what has really hampered uh, investment has been the issue of the tariffs. Like, how do they get get back their 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 investment? Because the tariffs are quite low. I don't know if I'm I'm clear on that one. It is uh, quite, quite clear. We just wanted to make sure that we have understood the question pretty well, but um, um, it, 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 this is good, and I think you had uh, John uh, supporting your, your, your question yes, as yes. well. It was, uh, and uh, maybe the last point is that not only private, uh, public-private partnerships, but also when you look at the operation and maintenance costs for most of the utility companies, you find that the the tariffs are not actually cost reflective but even then there's also these uh, you know uh, service level agreements which utility companies get into with uh, regulators which they have to meet for tariffs to be to be approved they cannot just approve uh, higher tariffs yes so that is my 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 submission Thank you so much. So um, this is quite great, and we did appreciate. Uh, thank you so much, Engineer. Uh, um, we also had a, a number of other questions, which are pre pretty well written in the chat box. And um, we would like to make sure that we have as much interaction as we can. And uh, at this point in time, I would like to see whether maybe David Bikaba from Liberia, you would like to probably speak to your question as well. Uh, looks probably David has issues with all audio, so it's fine. Uh, but then um, David uh, simply wrote a question to say, how can we co incorporate microfinance in the first approach which we are using in Liberia, which they are using in Liberia? How can we incorporate microfinancing in such kind of a situation? And I think uh, these are things that we could look at, especially also when we look at the case that we heard from Bangladesh. Um, I heard somebody trying to create their mic and ready to speak. Can you go ahead, please? No, I, I think I think you have already uh, clarified on it. That's exactly what I really wanted to hear. I just wanted to hear experiences of how we can actually incorporate microfinance in the first approach which we are currently using in Liberia. So I really appreciate a little bit of more, you know, details on how we go about that in Liberia. Uh, fine, thank you so much. Um, uh, this is quite uh, clear, David, and um, we will definitely be coming back to that as we respond to um, and reflect to some of these questions as well. Um, I would like also probably at this point to see if he probably, uh, Roberto, you would like to um, take up the mic and just vocabularize your question as well. Of course, it was also repeated by Majeda. So, Roberto, are you with us on this call uh, that you can speak? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, please, go ahead. Yeah, so my no, my question was uh, whether there have been actually any examples of countries uh, doing uh, statutory financial planning at the national level rather than at utility level, and if not, whether there are any countries that are currently considering uh, to do it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, and um, it's it's more about maybe an, a point that was also similar to what Majeda raised. And maybe finally, uh, we, we can hear from John as much as I would also like to hear Katrina say something. But John, do you want to just be quick to articulate what you exactly are trying to look at in this particular question that you raised in the chat? Yes, thanks, Nelson. Um, if you can hear me, uh, okay. Um, yes, it was really okay. just uh, great. Um, 
looking at the financing gap, I mean, it's obviously a very large financing gap that uh, that we're all looking to to see if we can address uh, in order to to be on track for attaining um, the sustainable development goals. And 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 really, my question was um, really to see whether um, either the World Bank or, or UNICEF or or any of our uh, sort of country governments uh, participating have managed to do some analysis to to get a feel for how that financing gap is going to be filled between the different sources. So we talked about the three T's, um, so the taxes, transfers, and tariffs, and then um, Dominic's presentation is very much talking about the use of blended finance and commercial finance. Um, and I just really was wondering what, what you think in terms of how much of a gap might be made from the different sources of finance. Um, and perhaps just a question on the um, scope for absorption of commercial finance, um, particularly when a lot of the challenges fragile state, the focus of the World Bank, and the world Bank and donors like DFID are looking to really step up their work in fragile states. And I just wonder if that made in commercial finance a bit more difficult. Thanks very much, Nelson, and thanks very much for all the presentations. Uh, thank you so much, John, and uh, that's uh, quite well understood, and you've added another layer in terms of uh, questions on the absorption capacity as one of the issues that was raised, I think, uh, by Starry uh, from the country overviews. Um, probably lastly, before we get to the presenters to speak to us, I'd like to hear from Katrina if you would like to probably raise this point that you raised earlier on. Uh, Katrina, you have the mic. Uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. There is strong feedback, so I think we have all to mute ourselves when someone else is speaking. Um, it, well, we keep talking about the financing gap and we keep talking about the 114 billion, which is mainly for CAPEX. I think uh, looking at the glass uh, respondents, it's obvious that with only of the 75 respondents actually mentioning developing um, financing strategies for the sector, uh, I wonder, so if we don't know what assets are in place, what's the value of the assets, what needs urgent maintenance, what needs uh, maintenance in 10 years, so if we don't have a proper financing strategy, which of the population is going to be served, which one is not, or we'll wait a little bit, it's very, very hard to put on finger on are some of these mechanisms enough? It's, it, are the blended finance mechanisms enough? Are, is public finance enough? Uh, how, for how much we would we need to raise taxes or tariffs or whatever mechanism they are? And I think that was the most um, yeah, shocking uh, data from the Glass report this last year. And uh, I think many of our organizations and, and the partners and the governments, we really need to uh, start um, embracing what's normal in other sectors, which is a multi-annual um, financing strategy for the sector. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Katrina, and uh, that's uh, quite clear. And I think at this point in time, maybe let's get back to uh, Dominic. And in responding to some of these questions, I'm sure some of us might also have some solutions and the responses. Let's feel free to um, raise them um, either in the chat or also maybe ask for an opportunity to do that. We will have until about maybe 20 minutes before we officially close uh, this webinar. Uh, of course, there are others who normally would want to join the webinar and leave at the end of one hour, but we still allow some more time just to ensure that there is more interaction. So uh, we are happy to have some of you who are still here, and uh, we would like to get back to Dominic at this point in time and uh, continue with the conversations and his reflections on some of the questions that have been raised. And for those of us who would like to probably join Dominic in responding to this, Let's feel free to do that as well. Thank you. Uh, Dominic, over to you. Thanks very much, Nelson. Um, I, Katarina's point is, is really, <laughs> and the, the glass data is really the key thing, is that still in the sector that we've been talking about financing for so long, um, there are, there's really very little effort, uh, very little emphasis on developing uh, financing strategies in, in sectors. There have been a few um, 
Sophie and a team, Sophie Tremelay and a team have done financing strategies in uh, Brazil and Ghana and Morocco, I believe. Um, but it would be interesting, I don't know if any of those countries are on this call, but it would be interesting to know whether they made a difference because uh, financing strategy is only step one and uh, using it then um, really goes to another question which was brought up, which was what happens when uh, tariffs in the sector are well below cost recovery. And, and there I think financing plans your first tool your in, in or your first weapon in that armory, uh, in the armory to combat that, um, to use very, very militaristic terminology. But going to um, the Ministry of Water or the Ministry of Finance with a financing strategy and saying, look, tariffs are just way, way below uh, cost recovery, I think is the, the first and possibly the most Im important step in uh, beginning to reconfigure sector financing. Um, going on then to a uh, point raised by David in Liberia about FAST, um, indeed we should put you in touch with Rokeh in Bangladesh um, who has been working on microfinance um, and there are a number of papers that I'm sure SWA colleagues can uh, forward to you in the medium uh, in, in the meantime. Um, so the point is that uh, financing sanitation through both households and uh, financing of entrepreneurs is one way to encourage um, the sector to move ahead. And finally to John Garrett's question, um, the there's a paper, I'll forward you the paper, John, on, uh, that Guy wrote, Guy Hutton wrote on uh, financing the sector, which, which comes, um, where, which is where this 114 billion, uh, quest, um, uh, billion a year comes from. Um, but your, your question was really, so what was existing financing adding up to? And uh, the, the answer is about... Um, 114 billion is three times the historic spend. But even beyond that three times historic spend, um, there's an interesting point, which is the method that was used to develop that uh, or to come to that figure of three times, um, used the assumption that uh, all existing um, infrastructure was basically working pretty well. Um, so I think that, that three times is, is a con very conservative estimate. Um, so the existing $114 billion a year being three times existing flows is, is conservative, and it could well be more than three times. Um, back to you, Nelson. Hello, Nelson. We can't hear you. Uh, Sitali, are you still online? Uh, now, so I'm just yes, so I muted my mic and then for some reason I couldn't see where to unmute it. But here we are. So thank you so much uh, for those comments and responses. And I reckon that on this call we also have other colleagues that would be happy to probably add to the voice that uh, um, you have shared, uh, Dominic. I, I don't know if there's anybody else who would like to probably uh, take up the mic and try to relate to these particular questions or topics that we have discussed here. I see um, Jochen um, Rudolph from the uh, Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Initiative of the Africa Development Bank. Would do you like to probably relate with some of these issues, um, uh, Rudolph? Okay, so it looks like he, there could be issues of audio as well, so we cannot hear from that. But earlier on, there was also a presentation from Tanzania which raised a couple of issues, uh, quite interesting perspectives uh, from our colleagues from Tanzania. I wonder whether anybody would like to also relate or even seek some further clarification or point Tanzania to some solutions to some of the issues that they raised as well. Um, anyone who would like to take up the floor at this point in time? Um, uh, Nelson, maybe just to um, say, I mean, I think Tanzania asks uh, one of the major questions about how to consistently have 
um, this dialogue with ministers so then you could put this evidence in their hands so that they could actually decide and I think this is one area where we could draw on experiences from other other countries now one thing I think that also came out from Tanzania's uh, experience is that they have possibly a focal point from the Ministry of Finance in the sector coordination um, what we know from Liberia is that initially they had a focal point from the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Finance ended up having a director for water sanitation and hygiene within the Ministry of Finance. So that route helped to bring the issues onto, onto the table of the Minister of Finance. But I think the big question here is how do you get the three ministers together so then they, cons they can consistently to have this discussion. Um, now, um, maybe other countries might have some ideas, but uh, some of the, the things that we had recommended that were that maybe you take advantage of those moments where they are most likely going to, to, to come to something that's hap happening in the sector. So if there's a joint sector review, um, is there space for them to do perhaps a press conference where they can address issues that they, where they can talk to issues that they have agreed or committed to and maybe in the run up to that press conference then maybe there might be an opportunity to have them together. Is there an opportunity for the cooperating partner, the lead cooperating partner for example, to maybe um, uh, orchestrate a meeting for them, uh, it, it could be a, a, a lunch, a dinner or a breakfast or something that they they might all be invited to and, and come together and have a conversation. Obviously these have to be a homegrown initiatives so it's good if they happen through even parliamentary committees or through um, uh, other sector advocacy maybe targeting other big events such as um, in the coming months now the global hand washing day and other activities where there could be a moment, a moment where um, these ministers could be brought together um, so that they could have their discussion. Uh, in addition to that, we can share with our colleagues in, in Tanzania uh, a report that was done by Clarissa. Um, so she, uh, there were about eight um, colleagues from various ministries of finance that were brought together in, um, at, a, uh, at a research workshop where they were asking some of these questions. What, what do you need to get ministers to actually have the, the data and what kind of data helps them, particularly the Minister of Finance, to make the right decisions? So we can share that information um, if it would be helpful. But I also think that this is one area that we can um, perhaps get a few other countries with interesting insights to share because just last week we were hearing from Haiti, they were asking a very similar question um, uh, and, and the other countries that would like to join SWA that before they before they join they're asking us how are your members actually being able to reach out to their to their finance ministers primarily but also to bring the sector ministers together so we're looking into that and we'll share the information that we have in terms of the paper that they refer to and potentially link you also with other countries such as Liberia where now there's a director in the Ministry of Finance uh, specifically for water sanitation and hygiene thank you um, many thanks, uh, Sutali. This is very helpful, and uh, I can also see uh, already some appreciation from the chat area. Uh, maybe I would want to ask, I mean, I should have at least the opportunity to ask, but I'd like to check with Dominic. Uh, having heard the presentations and the, all these um, interesting case studies from Kenya, um, uh, Bangladesh, and others, I wonder whether there are specific tools or materials that probably you can say are, could be available for some member states if they would like to probably uh, get a bit more into details in terms of understanding the issues of the brand and how to, to go about uh, probably unlocking some of these particular resources as well. Are there some materials or are there some avenues that probably one would uh, probably use to try to support uh, uh, maybe in the conversation that UBC one country might hold. want to have. Please wait. Uh, thank you, Dominic. I think you heard me on that particular uh, request. Um, thank you, Nelson. Yeah, just a quick one on that. Um, Sitali has a paper um, that the uh, water practice, the World Bank water practice, recently finished, which is an evolution of previous papers that we published prior to the. SWA um, high-level meetings, and um, so I'm sure that Sitali will circulate that to everybody. Back to you. Yes. 
Great. Uh, thank you uh, so much. And uh, it, it's good to know that there are yes. some materials where we can say they can save as references as well. Um, at this point, we still have about 10 minutes of time, which we can definitely put to a good use uh, to enhance our interaction here. At this point, then, I would like to find yes. out if anybody would like to take advantage of the available time to relate to the topic that we've discussed today or raise a question or even make a comment uh, in relation to uh, the issues of sector financing. Anybody who would like to take this opportunity? Hello, Nelson. Yes, please, go ahead. And you can introduce yourself and the to make a comment. This is Benjamin. Fabulous. Fabulous, wonderful. What to hear from you, Benjamin? Go ahead, please. Hello, Nelson. This is Benjamin. Yes, go ahead. There is a bit of a lag, but go ahead. We can hear you very well, Benjamin. Go ahead. Uh, um, thank you. I just want to echo what uh, Dominic has presented as a government representative. But actually, recently now, the new Act in Kenya, Water Act 2015, uh, we have established uh, what financial subsidy that is now looking forward to what we have already presented. So maybe in the near future, Kenya will be presenting more on what's happening in the area of full financing, which will be coming in the near future. So I just want to say that now we have a functional uh, hearing committee which uh, the PS Water has constituted but we've been looking carefully on the six and the financing the sector. So I thank you very much. Many thanks, Benjamin, for um, sharing that and also confirming that we should be looking forward to more stories stories from Kenya, building on what we have heard today uh, from Dominic, uh, which was the uh, case that was highlighted in the presentation as well. And I think knowing that this is an area that is a headache to a number of countries, we would really love to ensure that we are learning from other, let's say, countries within maybe the southern region. And uh, this is quite interesting to hear from you, Benjamin. I mean, I'm also seeing here a comment from Hanan, and I think he, Hanan, probably I would like you to take the opportunity of the mic and make your comment so that we can hear you. I know probably you are using a mobile phone or some kind of a device, but I think you may have to try to unmute and take advantage to speak to us. Hanan? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nelson. Hello, everyone. I'm Hanan, uh, actually focal point for SWA in Sudan, uh, but I'm joining this uh, conference call from uh, uh, UK. Uh, actually, my point of view, uh, 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 firstly, I would like to thank the presenter. Uh, who, uh, you gave really an impressive uh, presentation. Uh, I think it's a very nice model. Uh, we can use it really in our countries, uh, especially those countries who are not yet uh, involved with the strategic financial plan. Uh, in Sudan, maybe we have two sectors, the private sector uh, union. Uh, that means uh, we can enhance them and uh, we, we can tackle on this uh, model and uh, they can make use of it really. I'm going to translate it and um, to be formalized uh, and, and suitable for them uh, that they can uh, make use of it uh, to tackle the issue of water sanitation and hygiene in Sudan. At the same time, we have a strategic plan. It's running uh, now in the country uh, for water, sanitation, and hygiene, and uh, also uh, within the Ministry of Finance, so that we can make use of it. And for me, a civil society uh, organization, and on behalf of civil society organizations, focal point uh, in, in the world or maybe in Africa region specifically, or those countries who are suffering or not on track, on water sanitation and hygiene issues, they can make use of these models and take uh, the disadvantage uh, to have an advocacy work uh, right now. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Hanan. And
And uh, trust me, we are taking note of uh, some of the commitments that you are also making to drive um, uh, further discussions uh, in the government, but also you have highlighted the need to engage a bit more strategically with the private sector. And I think it's good that you have raised this important point that for countries that probably might not have advanced with their financial plans, definitely probably this is the right time to consider all the uh, various issues that we are discussing today in relation to sector financing to achieve the SDGs. Um, we still have, I think, a, a moment, and I think I'm itching to give a mic to Majeda. The reason why I'm saying Majeda is because he had, or there was a comment that Majeda made earlier on, and uh, we never allowed Majeda to speak to this, but probably we may have to allow Majeda to do this at this moment in time. And um, we will be still keeping the lines open until the next five minutes or so. So Majeda, you have the moment? Hi, Sitali and everybody. You hear me? We can, we can hear you very well, Majeda. Thank you. Um, we cannot hear you, oh, thank Majeda, you, thank you, thank you. as much as I noted that there was an effort for you to speak. Probably you may have to see whether you can play around with your audios, at least to make a comment. But again, uh, colleagues, I don't know if there's any one of us who would like to really uh, come in at this point in time and to make a comment uh, based on yes. what we have heard today uh, from Dominic or, and also what we have heard today from Tanzania and all the other comments that we've heard earlier. I don't know if there's anybody who would like to um, make a comment at this point in time. So looks like somebody said they could hear Majeda speak. Probably let's allow Majeda again to take the floor. Majeda? Yeah. Hi, hi, Sitali. Hi, Don. You hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Hear you. Okay. Funny enough. I I think we can oh, yeah. still hear, and uh, I, I can reckon that my colleague Stali is, is hearing. Probably, um, uh, yeah. oh, so it's Thank only you. me who cannot um, hear. I am, uh, with this, a number with of people the, who are saying they can hear file. my Jada. So this is interesting. And maybe those who can hear <laughs> can relay the information later on, but uh, let's still give my Jada a bit of more time to speak to us then. Those who uh, can manage to relay the uh, message. I mean, for the, the for the Majeda, she is speaking for now. The, for the yes, I'm I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Um, uh, I'm, say, I'm saying with regard to the financing uh, uh, strategies here, uh, what we're doing here in Palestine that we took the only the uh, strategic plan for 2017-2022, and that was our guidelines to build uh, the financing plan. But uh, when we went through that, I think we find a little bit uh, we need to modify more because there are a lot of elements that we miss hit in the plan. But in terms of financing and uh, overcoming of the gaps, that we are working on a system in the country like, you know, the rehabilitation and the tariff system, actually, that was uh, uh, one important issue for us to take into consideration. As well as what I was looking forward to see is the examples from other countries, how they can, you know, uh, build their financing plan, what are the main elements they are taking uh, on board, and as well the, the uh, involvement of the private sector, how we can we convince them to be part of this uh, uh, strategic financial, uh, financial plan. So this is a very good uh, uh, example if you can give us to guide us on, uh, on how we can move forward on preparing of our finance plan. And I think it's very important to have the Ministry of Finance, actually we have a fighting to have them here in the country to be part of that. And uh, uh, a, a national team for the SDGs. So uh, last week I mentioned about your webinar here and uh, and we mentioned that we are working on the financing plan and they were very surprised to see that we are in WASH, like, you know, moving forward while they are doing nothing in other sectors or they are doing very less progress uh, in that. 
Yeah. So I think this is what we need to, to work on. And I would like, uh, I, I would appreciate if some of the participants who have like, uh, you know, very good examples to share with us so we can take these examples and we can build our case in the country here. And I think we have a very good support from UNICEF as well. Great. Thank you so much, Majed. I think the, this this really speaks to actual to, to the purpose of these webinars in terms of finding also uh, places where you could get some additional information or support. Now, Dominic, you did mention that Albania has uh, prepared a very good strategic finan uh, financing strategy. Um, so, would you speak to whether we can get more information on that and uh, if there are other country examples that you might know? Um, we also can follow up on some of the countries that um, indicated in their uh, country overviews that they were intending to do um, uh, financing strategies. But Dominic, I just wanted to see um, whether um, you could um, get us more information on Albania and uh, also I think possibly other countries that you said Sophie was working on. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Stari. So I think uh, I heard Stari and then colleagues also heard from uh, Majeda's comments. And uh, thank you, Katrina, for you try to paraphrase uh, what has been said as well. Uh, at this point in time, I'm not so sure whether uh, maybe, Dominic, you would like to reflect back on this and maybe your final parting words. Uh, Nelson, looks like Dominic's line is um, has dropped. Uh, Nelson, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Yes, I was just monitoring Dominic's line. It seems to have dro dropped just about okay, uh, that's a fine. minute ago. Okay, fine. So I think then uh, maybe at this point in time I'll allow probably you, Stali, or my other colleagues who I know <laughs> is listening silently uh, Bob and probably just to make any remarks that could be like final remarks uh, unless there is anybody else who would like also to say something before we definitely end this particular call today. Anybody uh, who would like to speak before my two colleagues? Yes, so maybe over to you I think maybe I should say Bhavant and then I'll be sending us all back to Sitali to just close down everything. So, Bawant? I can tell that Bawant is also probably having issues with the audio, so it's pretty fine. Uh, in this case, then let's course, recourse back to Stali, and um, I think you can probably help summarize and dismiss us if possible. So very quickly, I think this this webinar has been very helpful to take us back again to the main issues that ministers um, were looking at in Washington D.C., but also to move the conversation further in terms of um, this area of potential sources of additional financing. You might have noticed that maybe um, the, the presentation was much more clear on um, uh, utilities um, and so the, this, this webinar you could say that to a great extent could respond very clearly to issues on water and also um, in financing where you've got utilities. Obviously, we talked about microfinancing. That was also another area for, for additional information. Um, the next webinar, which will happen at the end of next month, will focus more specifically on sanitation financing. So we'll be looking forward to also getting more examples about what countries are doing in this area, including on the issues of, of strategies, but also very practical examples in terms of how um, countries are working on the uh, sanitation financing. Uh, I, 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 what, some key takeaway things from, from what we've just heard are that there are a number of um, colleagues that are looking for good examples of financing strategies. Uh, so we'll be, you're giving us a homework, we'll go forward and look for those and then share. There are a few countries that also talked about baseline data 
Um, so we'll go and see if we can get some good information that can help in that regard. Um, and then the, the, the question of how to harness the, to influence the relationship and um, potential for sector ministers to meet with finance ministers. So we'll look into that as well and see if we can get good examples from other countries that we can share with our colleagues in Tanzania and other places. Um, we have two more webinars tomorrow, one, on Fre one in French and the other one in Spanish. For those of you with colleagues in countries where, where these two languages would be useful for them, please let them know they can join these two webinars. Uh, and then for those that feel that you have, um, you could help us to respond to some of the questions we had today. Uh, Katarina, I'm thinking of you, John, and uh, also uh, Benjamin and others in different countries. If you think that you've got um, examples and in, uh, is, um, uh, is, uh, information that could help us respond to this, do not hesitate, let us know and we'll respond to that. Um, uh, thank you so much, Nelson, over to you. Um, many thanks, uh, Stali, and I think uh, this is a, quite a great summary, and I think it takes us to the end of the webinar today. And uh, many thanks for sharing with us that we still have uh, a webinar coming up next month, and I think more information will follow. We will also make arrangement to ensure that we share the presentation, but also the summary of the webinar today. And uh, there are a number of things that uh, we are definitely going to follow up. So we will definitely be uh, sharing all this with you and coming back to those of you as well that um, specifically request us uh, some things to do. So this is the end of our webinar today and uh, many thanks for taking the time to join and for those of you who were with us from the beginning up to the end, we definitely would want to appreciate that and we are looking forward to having you uh, at right at the same spot but next month and of course more information will follow on that one and we'll be focusing on a very interesting topic which is about financing specifically for sanitation. I think that's the main topic but more details will be coming your way. Thank you and do have lovely evenings or enjoy your dinner, you do have a lovely night and wishing you all the best. Bye bye from this end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelson and Sikali for collecting me to the phone. Bye, Benjamin. Bye, bye, bye Benjamin. Bye.